government has released something called a draft strategy, the aim of which is to come up with ways of reducing our annual 10 tonnes of food losses and waste. Alan Browdy is the CEO and founder of SA Harvest, a food rescue organisation in South Africa. Just a reminder that they are partnering with Daily Maverick, particularly to try and get an urgent intervention into the hunger crisis around the Lusikisiki area of the Eastern Cape. And there is a link, if you are able to, um, quite. I'm delighted that um, a relatively high number of Cape Talk listeners contacted me yesterday after the interview with Estelle Ellis about this and wanted details of how they could make a donation of a couple of food parcels. Each food parcel will feed a family for two months. And if you just go to the Daily Mavericks landing page, there you will find a link. And um, Alan Bradia, good afternoon, and and thanks for this that initiative. It's um, it's part of civil society stepping in to do what government is failing to do. So I'm I'm very pleased that you got involved with that. What what are the major elements, Alan, of the draft strategy to reduce our food losses and food waste? Hi, John. Yeah, and thanks so much for that intro. The work we're doing with Daily Maverick is outstanding. There's been an unbelievable response. Our team is already down in the Siki Siki and we're starting to distribute food right away. So it's really wonderful. So yeah, in terms of your question, I mean, it's quite a complex document. And, uh, you know, uh, our main concern about it is, is that firstly, it's not really um, a legal thing. It's just sort of suggestions that go um, into quite a lot of detail about what can be done. Not saying that the suggestions are bad, but we feel that uh, one of the most important things is that there's not enough guts in them. And there's two, uh, the, the couching in sort of voluntary stuff, and we'll talk together, and we feel strongly that there are things that have to be done with real um, uh, muscle and uh, decisiveness about um, ending hunger in, in, in this country, which is, I mean, you know, not, not that many people are aware that it's, it's at uh, catastrophic levels. Uh, and, and many describe it as, as at wartime-like levels. Uh, you know, with uh, 27% of our children uh, under five stunted from a lack of um, uh, nutrition, uh, you know, 20 million people on a uh, serious, curve of um, food vulnerability, ranging from um, running out of money every month uh, to going to sleep hungry every night, which, you know, which includes millions of children to our shame. Now, uh, one of the things that we're asking them to do, uh, the government, is come down with legislation. Not let's talk about it, let's think about it. But, it, it's, but the, it's the way policy works, Alan, is that there's a draft strategy, then there's a white paper, then there's a green paper, then there's legislation, then there's further public comment, then there's the mm. passage through the National Assembly. Um, unfortunately, yeah. legislation takes a long time, but there must be things that can be done without legislation being necessary. Yes, I, listen, I agree with you, and there is this process, but the process from our point of view is too long. I mean, what you're talking about is, is years of process, mm. of working things out, of going through the protocol. We can't wait that long. We've got children dying in this country from hunger. You know, France, for example, in 2016, there wasn't papers and waiting. They just made food waste. You know, the 10 million tons of food that goes to waste every year, as you mentioned, that's equivalent to 30 billion meals. And when you take 20 million people who are, are, are on the border of starvation, they need 20, 20 billion meals a year if you feed them uh, three meals a day. So just in food waste alone, there's a, 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 a surplus of 10 billion meals. So let's do it right away. Do a little bit of exercise, learn from other countries, and make uh, the food waste illegal. They did it in France in 2016. It was called the Garo Law, and it made a massive difference. They've done it in England. They've done it in other European countries. Let's just do it. You know, there comes a time 
uh, when we just have to stop talking and stop the protocol of government. And, can can and, I? And, and get, sorry, Alan, because of, because of the clock. Um, uh, sorry. So in those countries where this law was passed banning mm-hmm. food waste, what mm-hmm. what happened? I mean, how how did the various people and institutions that were responsible for food waste respond to do something else with the food so it didn't become food waste. What were the practical implications of this legislation? Well, I mean, you know, you just weren't allowed, if you were, for example, a retailer, you just were not allowed to waste food. So what did you do instead? I mean, how did supermarkets change their pattern of behavior? Well, firstly... um, they didn't uh, rely on their suppliers just to come and pick up the food so they could save money and then go and dump that food because the suppliers are also involved in their own businesses. They had to make systems. They had to gather the food that was going to go to waste, put it in certain places in their various um, supermarkets, do it properly, do it systematically, and then they were forced to give it to Companies like ours, like SA Harvest Food Forward South Africa, to come collect the food and deliver it to people who needed it. I mean, it, 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 was a, it, it, it takes time. It's not that easy. But there's a system which they put in place uh, uh, under the threat of huge fines that enabled them to save in the first year 30 percent um, uh, uh, more uh, food that would have gone to landfill than they did the year before. I mean, it was huge. And that's just one bit of legislation, which is done quickly, done efficiently. And, and, and you know, that's what we need. Thank you very, very much for explaining that to us and for the passion with which you approach this incredibly important South African crisis topic. Alan Browdy, the CEO of SA Harvest.